Hey, what's going on, y'all? Uh, this is Lucas here. Um, I haven't made a video in a while, but I've actually been kind of excited because um, I've gotten more and more comments on previous videos. So I wanted to do a follow up. Um, if this is helpful, I really appreciate the comments and stuff like that. It uh, makes me excited to make new stuff. Um, it's a little early out here in LA for a musician, at least. So just bear with me, but today's video is going to be epic. Um, I wanted to do kind of like a more advanced um, dive into the superior drummer setup that I have going on um, for writing songs. And um, we're using Ableton here, and this would assume that uh, you've had some experience um, using both Ableton and Superior. Um, because I guess I'll, I'll be talking about some more advanced things. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to talk about is how to set up your routing. Um, it's kind of nice to get that over with, so you can just save it as a preset and not have to worry about it again. But I've done like a million different variations and actually finally feel like I figured out one that makes most sense for me. So hopefully that's useful for you. Um, the second thing is using drum triggers. Um, so we'll talk a lot about that. Um, the third thing is how to set up MIDI effects racks to um, label all your key mappings in the uh, MIDI editor. And the last thing is uh, setting up your side chains um, from your kick and snare triggers or whatever else that you want to do. Um, so yeah, it's super epic. Hopefully it doesn't get long. I'm going to try to make this pretty short. So um, I may make two separate videos, but we'll figure it out. So um all right, check this out. Here's our little track. Um, okay, so you get the idea. We have like a little song going on. Uh, I'm just using this because like everything's already set up, so I can just show and explain it. So first thing, the track that I have um, for Superior Drummer I labeled it as drums MIDI, and it doesn't actually have any audio playing through it. Um, but let's just start with that. So basically, you just have to create one MIDI track to get going. Set up your superior drummer drum set the way that you want it. So as of late, I've been using this um, Death and Darkness uh, like metal sample pack, which actually I would say is the best sample pack by like a huge margin. Uh, if you make this kind of music, um, I I've spent so much money on this crap but basically i i don't know i thought that the progressive foundry was going to be the one for me but you got to get this death and darkness that's the way to go for sure if you're playing like metal um there's a bunch of kids i actually ended up browsing the kits through here um instead of their like preset mixer pre's uh they're like mixer presets up here which like change the mixer and stuff um so anyway explore that but basically the main thing i wanted to talk about was you can hide once you do this, you can hide all this extra stuff. Basically, you send all your mics through buses, so all the kicks. Um, I, I labeled it first and then um, sent all these kicks to kicks, all the snares to, to snares, and so on and so forth. And once you do that, you can kind of hide it, and you can hide the user mics too, and you can just have these buses and the outputs. And then furthermore, the buses I actually routed to their own outputs, which I labeled, so... Right up here, you have your output. So one and two is kick, uh, three and four is snare. I used to get really annoyed because I never wanted anything um, to be routed to one and two because um, basically it would always come out this MIDI track. Um, so then you would have to, I don't know, maybe this is super OCD, but basically if, if I had my kick routed to one and two, then this track that Superior Drummer is on, I would have to label kick, and then every time I would record, it would say kick, and I, I don't know, I just thought that was really annoying, but I'll show you my workaround for that. So basically, the first thing you gotta do is just set up your routing, right? So one and two is kick, three and four is snare, however you wanna do it, um, that's just kind of up to you. And they have this um, multi-output um, apply, multi-channel outputs, so you can do that even quicker, but it just helps to label it. Then in Ableton, the superior track I, I labeled drums MIDI. Um, I have a bunch of triggers here, which we're going to talk about later, so just ignore these. But our kick, let me just make these bigger. Oh, wait, sorry, I can just. So here's uh, kick, snare, hats, toms, overheads, room, and parallel, all coming from superior. Um, so kick, what I did was the drums MIDI. 
So normally what you would do, like for snare, is you would go to, you would select the track, which is called drums MIDI, or you could label the superior drummer. Actually, that would make probably make that a little, I'll just label that SD3. So normally you would go here to your input, hit SD3, which stands for superior drummer 3, and then check your input, right? So 3 and 4. But for kick, I'm actually shooting this out. So in my output, I'm actually just sending this right to kick to track in. So as you can see, here, let me... My kick is coming through here automatically. So it shows up on the meter here, but it's being shot, fed right into this kick track. That way I can use this only for MIDI. I don't know if that's OCD, but let me know if you think that's helpful. Um, okay, so now our actual kick track is here, our snare is here. So that's three and four. Hats, five and six. I find it useful to have a separate hats, uh, but I realize not everyone wants to do that. Toms, I just kind of conglomerated into one stereo track, but you may not want to do that. You might want to have separate toms. You'll have more tracks, but yeah, I just, I just have it on a stereo bus. Um, I know a lot of engineers would be upset about that. Um, overheads, nine and 10, room, 11 and 12. And I did set up a parallel in Superior because I really like the way that this, so I just basically added a track and uh, used Punch Exciter on here. I think this is a really cool plugin that I don't have in Ableton, so I just have that on a separate track. If you're curious, it sounds like this. It's just a slammed compressor track, and I don't have to do that in Ableton anymore. So here's our drum sound now. I'll, I'll keep the triggers off because we have not talked about that yet. So here's the superior drummer sound routed. Cool. So that's just the basic gist of how I set up the routing. So this whole thing, you can just drag. Well, you can save this as a template, and then it'll show up in your templates. And then, for example, so like if I go to my metal production template, um, I can always just pull this whole drum setup out. Or you could drag this whole thing into a folder of your choice, uh, so like in your user library or whatever. So once you do it, you don't have to be doing this every single time. Obviously, that takes forever, and it's really annoying. Um, okay, so the second thing I wanted to talk about, which is a very interesting topic to me. I'm not a drummer, so if uh, you don't agree with any of this or whatever, uh, that's cool. I would love it if you uh, left comments and chewed me out, but when I listen to all these like heavily produced rock and metal albums, I'm hearing lots of triggers. Um, I think the first mistake that I made like trying to mix drums like super high fidelity was using like way too much EQ and compression. I think that's not the move. I think drums really need to be dynamic. Once you squash them, it, they just lose everything to me personally. Um, the solution to that is using triggers. So check this out. This is what I did. This is the elegant solution that I came up with. Um, below your superior drummer so the first thing i used to do was i used to just create a new midi track below superior drummer and then i would just drag the midi down um, move the notes around to kind of get it right and then just add like a kick sample i realized that was super not smart um, basically you can drag a midi track down and you can um, actually have an input being fed into from superior drummer three uh, from this track and it will trigger your midi as long as you set up a MIDI effect rack, which we're going to get more into. Um, but basically what I have this doing, so if we look at our MIDI here for Superior Drummer, uh, let me just fold this down. So our kick is C1. So we need this to literally only get triggered by C1. Oh, I guess there's two kicks, so I believe it's C1 and B0. Um, but basically what I have this doing let me just expand this. Oh, sorry, I need to press key. Okay, so this is annoying. I did this once and then and then never mess with it. Um, so basically, you just have to select C1. So you basically have, like are allowed to like narrow this thing down. So I just narrowed it down to C1 and then B0 right here. This is kick two, so it's like a like a two kick um, setup in Superior Hall. Let me just show you that. Not all the drum sets will have these. Um, so obviously, sorry, it might just be one kick or whatever, so it's even easier. But So essentially what happens is this MIDI effect rack will filter everything else except for C1 and C2, which are the notes that I have set up for, sorry, for, for my kick in uh, 
in this MIDI editor. We're going to get way more into that, so this can get a little bit confusing at first. Um, so with that, and then after this, after you set up these chains, so I have C1 and, and B0 being triggered. On B0, what I did is I pitched it up by 1 um, so that this sample doesn't change, like uh, get played different notes. Um, I believe there's other workarounds for that, but just bear with me one second. I think this will make way more sense. So you have to load a sampler and use a kick sample of your choice. So that's like a whole other can of worms. So like what samples do you use, whatever. I got this um, pack from this producer, George Lever, who produces band Loathe and a couple other bands that have some cool drum sounds that I liked. Um, but you can get like drum samples from like a lot of different websites. Um, so that requires like some re research and effort, but basically what we're doing is we're layering a second kick that has a different sound over the original kick to essentially beef it up without having to use compression and over EQ and stuff, which messes with like the phase and will make things sound like thin and papery and not very good in my opinion. So we just have two kicks, boom, so that sounds like this. So here's the original kick. Um, let me actually just move this together. So this is the superior drummer kick. Now plus the trigger, which is turned down. So the triggers, I don't like to hear them specifically. I just want them to kind of be there. So here's the trigger alone. I actually did EQ this, sorry. Um, whatever, it was just there before. But yeah, so it's just a sampler track. And I what I did is I turned the root down to C1 because that's the note that you want to trigger because the sampler will like kind of detune the sample depending on what note you play on the keyboard. So we want it to be triggered on C1. So there's that. And then I just repeated the whole process for the snare. And actually I did multiple snares. Um, whoops, so let me just make these a little smaller. Um, so here's our superior snare. You can hear it has bleed and stuff. Um, and the snare trigger, I did the same process. So I created a MIDI effect rack. So you can find this in MIDI effects and MIDI effect rack and you just drag that in. We, I have different snare hits uh, mapped to the keyboard. So obviously there's different hits. So like the way that I have this set up is there's the side stick, center, roll, and rim shot. So I have, well, not the side stick, but just these three selected on the MIDI roll for my trigger. So they're E1, D sharp one, and D1. So this depends on the way that you have it um, routed. And I have the, this being pitched up two to compensate so that it triggers the same note. This pitched up one and this with no pitch effect. Um, so this pitch effect right here, you can just find it in MIDI effects, pitch. So the reason is if I have this sending D sharp one to the sample or D one to the sample, the sample is gonna be detuned by one semitone and two semitones um, respectively. So I have that pitching it up on the snare roll and the snare rim shot. We'll probably get more into this in a, in a separate video. But, and then I repeated the same process. I use sampler instead of simpler because it has this button here that allows you to select the root. So I want my root to be E1 because that's the main mapping for my snare on superior. Um, and I have some effects here which aren't really necessary. Um, so here is what our snare sounds like with superior, or I'm sorry, with the trigger added. So here's the trigger by itself, and here's the original snare. Yeah, so we're just layering another sound. And in addition to that, I have a second snare, which I got this idea from this engineer, Andy Wallace. Um, this is an ambient trigger, so I noticed that he was just using like literally a noise sample. Um, so I imported a sample like from kind of a more electronic um, drum kit library uh, called Vengeance. Uh, there's a million of these online, just look them up. There's like splice and all that stuff that you can use, but it's more of like a clap sound. Um, kind of just like ambient noise or like um, just literally noise that's kind of pitched. So you just have to find one that fits. Um, and then I layered that on top. I kind of wanted to get that like, like Lamb of God type of snare sound where there's like sort of almost like industrial noise layered in. I don't know if that's exactly what they did, but like I, you know, on, on on those like metal records, a lot of times on the snare, I can hear like this extra sound that's not like a snare. If that makes any sense. So here's this now with all three. 
it adds like length to it without having to over compress the room which is another thing that you could do or you could put um, reverb on the snare there's a lot of different things to do but i just found that you get more control from using an ambient trigger and i got that idea from andy wallace so look him up if you want to learn more about that um, and here's our drum sound now i like to have the triggers like not really noticeable just so you can kind of feel them This was getting extremely long, so I'm going to follow up with a second video where I'm going to talk more about the MIDI effects rack to set up your key mappings for Superior so that way you can do this right here with everything labeled. And I'll also talk a little bit about side chaining. Um, if you got this far, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. And let me know if this was helpful or useless. All right, later.